Michael Hornby co-hosting all week long and doing a great job. Mike, it's wonderful to have you here. Good morning, Rob. This whole working everyday thing is for the dogs, man. I got to tell you. Wearing you I really like uh, sitting on the couch watching you drinking my coffee as opposed to being in here. Oh, but yeah, I was in bed by 9.30 last night. This so. grueling <laughs> this grueling schedule of two hours of work a day is getting to you. Well, I, I didn't leave here until almost 7 last night. So. I know. You have other things to do. But to the rest of the world, <laughs> once this show's over at 10, everybody it's goes home. That's true. Also, welcome back, Mr. Bill Kearns, the, ex- the executive director of the Berkeley County Health Department. Good morning, William. Good morning. Twice, twice in one week, <laughs> be here with the boss man. I'm going to give you one word of advice. Don't ever tell Rob you're going to retire because he will label you as a quitter. That's right. Well, I, I just hope he never retires. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be working the board. And you know how that oh, works. Oh, that, oh. that won't end well. Yeah. <laughs> Retiring is just another way of quitting. So much for TV 10. Yeah. As long as the stock market doesn't shoot up 20%, I think I'm good. Uh, right now, we're, yeah, we're, it this looks, is it's horrible this week. Terrible start to September. Just don't look at your portfolio. And I think I started it with the uh, conversation we had with Phil on, on uh, Tuesday with saying, hey, every September is down uh, four years in a row, and it uh, looks like we're going to be down again this year. Yep, all of the suit. start. Now, there was a stat that said that uh, down start to September does not mean a down last quarter. That's true. So don't interpret mm-hmm. too much into a bad start to September. August was a bad start, too, if I remember. And when it's down, it's a good time to buy, too. You know, so uh, Bill Kearns uh, is uh, back as co-host, but also doubling as a guest in our first segment today. And, Bill, it is as a guest, I welcome you once again to the program. Thank you. Is that, does that mean I get double salary for today? Put another zero. Double on of it. zero is equals zero. Put another zero on Since that Since we bumped yeah. you on Tuesday, the last segment was supposed to be Bill and uh, – Rob hadn't informed us that we had the commissioners coming. Because he was so. suffering from COVID yeah. head. <laughs> I, I, uh, is that an actual term? Because I know you labeled it. It's used a lot. It's foggy. You get fog? Yes. Right? So apparently I booked Eddie Goat. But I'm not hour. sure what you label it when you don't have COVID, just foggy head. Just me. I think <laughs> yeah, I just, just called just pulling, pulling a Rob. Uh, so um, Eddie and Jim were here on Monday in the 930 slot, which I had fortunately left blank. Obviously, I must have known that I had scheduled them, and uh, they were fortunately they showed. Bill was kind enough to defer his segment to this morning with the health department. Budgeting is always an issue with the health department, Bill. And the ability to pay uh, competitive salaries to your employees because we are a border county is an issue which really uh, reared its head when you were looking for a head nurse, a chief nurse for the county, and you were able to get some relief on that a couple years ago, as I recall. Yes, um um, Tanya Manley is our nurse director. She's been with us almost two years now, so it's kind of uh, that time has flown by. Um, she may have a differing opinion on that, but for the day-to-day operations, but it is it's difficult to um, to hire um, people within the medical field. Period. Um, much within less county because too, it's right? so competitive. What's that? Within county, too. Within the I mean, county. You're oh, absolutely. With the, the hospitals and the yeah, hospitals and uh, home care agencies. And uh, during COVID, we were competing with traveling nurses, which paid an exorbitant salary. Oh, yeah. um, but it's still difficult across the board um, for salaries to be able to get people hired within a local health department while we advertise, you know, we have incredible benefits and they are absolutely incredible, but it's difficult when you're competing with some of your retail stores that um, are paying equal, if not more, um, to, to work that at your local convenience store mm-hmm. than what we can hire people in with sometimes that for positions that require a bachelor's degree similar to our our health inspectors, um, our sanitarians. um, They require a a bachelor's degree for that position. Now, we do have a special hiring rate for uh, Berkeley County that that we were able to acquire, but it's still salaries that's extremely low, especially if you're hiring someone that may be right out of college. Can you give us an idea, Bill, of what it used to be and what it got bumped to for nurses? Well, for nurses, um, to give you an example for a nurse two, which is basically a registered nurse either with a BSN or has a couple years of service as a registered nurse, um, right, the, the state salary for that position is right around about $40,000. For a nurse? For a nurse. Registered nurse. Used to be. It still is. Still is. Um, oh, but wow. we have a special hiring rate for our county that's seven seventy eight thousand, almost twice. Uh, yeah. So, 
but how did you get that special hiring rate? We had to petition the division of personnel and send statistics about our neighboring states and counties, um, what the cost is to get go before their board, and then they approved it. So we have that in place for a number of our positions within the health department um, for different salaries, but sanitarians, um, office staff, we have those special hiring rates in place. So we're we're better than most of the state as far as our hiring rates, but it's still difficult. Okay. So I, I need to know a couple of things here because this has been the argument against locality pay for teachers. Fred Albert even espoused this yep. in his interview with you Monday, Mike. So the rate the rest of the state pays is low 40s. Mm-hmm. In Berkeley County, that nurse gets 78. Mm-hmm. Have you seen an influx of nurses from 300 miles away and other corners of the state of West Virginia to work in Berkeley County because you can make nearly twice as much as a nurse here as you can in Boone County? No. Have you seen anybody from Clay County? No. Have you gotten any applications from Kanawha County? No. McDowell County? No. Mingo County? We'll keep on going now. <laughs> so what you're telling me is because a nurse's salary is doubled for locality pay in the Eastern Panhandle, it hasn't drained nurses from the rest of the state. It has not. Is there any indication to think that that would actually take place if the same situation was in place for teachers? No. Have you gotten one single application from outside the eastern panhandle in West Virginia from a nurse to come work in Berkeley County since you got that pay bump? We have not. And the nurses within our area are they're in hospitals. You know, when you and we actually have what's, nursing what's, students rotate through the health department for college, right? And because um, we have an agreement with like Shepherd University and Blue Ridge, but we're getting them through there. But when they're coming out of school, that that new nurse is looking for that adrenaline position sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're going to or they're going to the hospital because the hospital's offering equal, if not better, benefits, and they're offering way better salaries. Even with our special hiring rate, they're getting higher salaries going to the hospital. So 78 leaves you still in an uncompetitive position here in the Eastern Panhandle. Correct. And then keeping the staff there. Um, and again, we're, we're talking about nurses. That's just one of our many positions we have within the health department, um, positions that we have open and, and sanitarian positions. Uh, again, I said they require a, a require a minimum of a bachelor's degree. And what does sanitarian start at? $40,000 a year. And you've not been able to get and that's it? a special hiring rate for there as well. Because their normal state salary um, would normally be right around in the low 30s. When the state passes a 5% pay raise, do those folks get a 5% pay raise? Good question. Um, It was in the governor's budget to um, allow uh, that 5% increase um, for the state. And health departments were supposed to be included in that. Um, Senator Blair and and uh, Barrett had made sure the health departments were included in that, but during the the clawback potential funds, that was pulled back. So the funds that was part of not, the 180 million that was put in that special yes. fund. So that that um, therefore they said they were not going to fund that money for the health departments. If health departments were going to give that, it was going to have to be out of your own revenue. It would not be coming as additional funds from the state. Um, so as a matter of fact, they, they it, um, reduced the state line item as a whole, not only the amount from this year's, which was an additional $2 million that's supposed to help across the state to, to take care of that 5% um, of a salary increase, but they also took away what they gave the previous year. So they took away $4 million. Uh, so it's made it really difficult across the state, not even for health departments to be able to give a cost of living increase. Um, so unless they had local support or you have a county that's growing, such as Berkeley County, you really had difficult times in providing any type of um, increase in salary to your staff. Uh, many health departments ended up lay, laying staff off where they just did discontinued positions that they had. Uh, so it's really made it difficult. So, Bill, how many other agencies can go to the Department of Personnel and ask for a, um, a special rate or a special salary? Is that is that across the board that, that people can do that, or is it only within? I know any Board of Health 
can okay. petition to the Division of Personnel. I don't want to speak on um, state agencies. Health, right. the, health boards are considered non-state agencies. Okay. We are state civil service employees, so we are hired through the state registry, but that's as far as we go as far as being a state employee. And then going back to the funding, I, I found uh, during the interims we had uh, Delegate Riley was had a line of questioning about that money and why we're not drawing that money down. Um, it's very frustrating as a legislator to see the agencies which are part of the executive branch just deciding not to draw down funds which have been appropriated and, and have been approved to use, but they just have to go through the, the – the hoops, if you will, they got to do the paperwork, um, and and that was one of the most frustrating things. Is why are they not drawing those funds down now? Why are they waiting? Because if they wait till March, those funds are gone, mm -hmm. and they won't be back in the budget, even though we appropriated them the way we should. Okay. And, and we've been questioning them as to why we're not getting that that thing, but we don't have that control o over over the agency. Well, I, many of the legislators, and, and, and you as one, had said, you know, those funds were put into that fund for the health departments and to be able to take care of funds to satisfy increases. But at the end of the day, it's left up to the discretion of the secretary of DHHR, and she said that those monies would not be coming out to the health departments to support raises. Um, that it would, if monies are there, but it's a one-time thing and it could be for special projects. Um, but it's not just earmarked there's, and there was a pot of money there, $5 million for DHHR, but it was not just earmarked for local health departments, although 4 million of that should have been for health departments, but instead it was for special projects that would be related to DHHR as a whole. So not necessarily for your health department. So again, it makes di di makes it difficult to to keep competitive salaries. We can do special hiring rates all day long and request additional salaries to be able to hire staff in. And if we present it well enough, um, division of personnel would approve it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, where do you get the dollars to support those special hiring rates? Because money that comes to the health department, for the most part, people don't know. We, we get so much per capita to health departments, but a lot of the monies that we get as well either come from some local um, contributions from county commissions and board of education and city of Martinsburg. But um, a lot of it's grants, and grants are one time. You can hire staff under a grant, but if that grant goes away, so does the staff. So how much of your budget is state-funded? Versus county funded versus grant versus local fees. Well, in ballpark, I'm not. Yeah, um, I'm going to say the the state aid line item constitutes about a third of our budget from state aid, and then the rest is made up through fees and local funding and grants. Bill Kearns is not just co-hosting today; he's also the guest in the first segment of the program. So Bill, when is the next time you have an opportunity to present your case for additional salary for the staff that you have or the staff you're actually looking to still hire? Well, we'll be, um, as the legislature goes back in the first part of the year, that of course will be on the uh, on the agenda to be able to discuss with the legislators. Um, Kara, as the incoming uh, director, will have that responsibility to meet with legislators as well as the rest of our leadership team when we go to Charleston. But um, so, and our lobbyist does a lot of work behind the scenes um, for local health across the state um, because obviously health department directors can't be in Charleston every day that needs to be so that's why is your lobbyist the same as the county lobbyist it is not um the the uh, health department lobbyist um is, is a very small portion of her time it is that representing health departments in charleston she has many other agencies that uh, that she um that she represents but is that um, melanie it is melanie yeah. so but it is uh it, it's it's it she she is very well worth her time and um, she represents us well in speaking with legislators and then when we're in Charleston she sets up meetings uh, so we can go and speak with them but that'll be the next opportunity to be able to talk about we need to get our um, state aid line item increased when we did a, um, a, a study the state did a study and actually legislators helped helped fund a portion of that um, about 15 years ago 
we found out at that point we were $16 million under budget where we should be when you looked in comparison to other states. Um, so we did had that study and it was done through Marshall and um, we have not seen a huge increase. At one point we did see about 25% of our funding was um, reduced and then through the years that's come back some. But this, uh, this past year when we had to look at potentially rolling back the amount of money that we would get from state aid line items back two years, it really is an impact on health departments. And people don't really realize how important your health departments are until you have a, a pandemic on your hands. And we're called upon to work seven days a week and sometimes 12, 14 hours a day. And you have minimal staff to do this with. So we had to partner with a lot of agencies to get our mission accomplished. And we did a great job. But it took a lot of manpower and a lot of overtime. and But also um, having that assurance that when you go out to a restaurant that you're going to be safe to be able to go out there and eat. That's because we have staff in your local health departments that ensure that when you go out, these places are safe to be able to eat at. When you're having homes that are being built at, um, that – People have to apply for septic permits so that the sewage that you are placing in the ground is going to go where it's supposed to be and not in your well where you're going to get your drinking water out of. Many things like that, right down to animal bites and and, um, and complaint investigations. and All those things rely on your health department, but we have to have funds to be able to have staff to be able to, uh, to do those tasks. And I'll give your department a lot of kudos this year, especially I know the uh, the there was a lot of issue, a lot of wait time for vaccine um, mm-hmm. in the private sector, and the health department really did alleviate a lot of that. Uh. Yeah, there was a, and and it happens every year to an extent. Um, with um, children going back to school, there are certain mandatory vaccinations going into the public school system, and um, so we we always have a issue of right at the last minute the parents need to get their children in uh, to get those vaccines and and we uh, pulled out all the stops this year because it was even more drastically increased the number of people that needed to get uh, vaccinations uh, or they wouldn't be able to have their child in school so um, we we pulled our nurses down from morgan county to be able to help in berkeley county because that seemed to be where the majority of the problem was and so we we got them vaccinated and we still are um, because there was a an extension yeah, of two weeks that it, was yeah. provided by our state health officer, uh, so we we had that two weeks, but we're still seeing those people. So, and when you look at even though we need to have more staff available, our nurses in Berkeley County, we have two full time nurses right now. We do have a third full time one that's going to be starting um, at the end of the month. But for those nurses to be able to accomplish the major tasks that they did of getting these children vaccinated. And when you have some of these children come in, um, they may be receiving three or four vaccines. And sometimes those vaccines aren't pleasant. Um, these children sometimes, should, or most for the most part, should have had them when they turned four years old, but they may not have got them for whatever reason, but now all of a sudden they can't get into kindergarten because they don't have the required vaccines. So we had to, we had to do that, we had to order extra vaccines. But the, we were not the only agency in the area that was stepping up to vaccinate, but it was it was a huge task. And that's right on the heels of going into influenza vaccination season. Bill, you mentioned the pandemic, and few things have divided us more than that pandemic. And during it and in the aftermath of it, the health department, by some legislators in Charleston, became a target. They felt that you folks overreached used power that you shouldn't have or didn't have in shutting things down and the masking and such. And as a result, some of those legislators decided they wanted to attack health department funding and take away some of your power. Mm-hmm. Has any of that been successful? Have you lost any funding because of members of the legislature who wanted to more or less, get, in some cases, get back at the health department? And has that affected your funding in any way? I, I can't say with 100% assurance that that is an issue of necessarily why um, funds were supposed to be earmarked for the health department this year were not provided. I can't say. Um, could be. I don't know what's in the minds of their legislators. Um, I do to the one to the right I, of I could. I could uh, say probably the health departments are getting a little 
bit of backlash, but it's not, I don't think it's the local health departments that they're really angry at. The, 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 the legislators that I know that are talking about these things are angry at the Department of Health at the federal level. And, and that, kind of, that trickles down, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think there's, there is a little bit about, uh, of that, Rob. I think you, you know, people very, I think that's why the vaccine in, in schools bill came up last year. It, it, it's, that COVID vaccine is so polarizing and, and the effects of what happened in that thing really did affect everything. And that's why people are now attacking all vaccines. When the governor issued an order for businesses to shut down, Bill, did you have the option locally to ignore the governor's orders? We actually had, I had one legislator that came into my office and actually um, yelled a little bit because um, services were being delayed as far as, I guess they had some of their constituents were complaining because um, permits weren't being issued as timely as people wanted them to be. But basically my, all my sanitarians that do those were actually working as epidemiologists during that time and contact tracing. So they said, and, and this person said, well, you don't have to listen to what the governor says. Well, it's an executive order. So yes, we do. And um, so there, there was a good bit of angry legislators and, and in the community and Honestly, all of us that were in public health had never been through a pandemic. Um, most people alive were not through pandemics. Um, so we were, we were doing whatever we could to try to protect the many and with as least impact as possible. But we still lost so many lives that maybe we didn't need to. Um, but we did everything we could within our abilities as a public health department that people would expect from a health department. Um, could we, did we do everything we needed to? No, but staffing limitations were there. Um, but mass vaccination clinics, we, it was one of the tools that was in our toolbox. So we utilized that tool. Could there have been better ones? Most likely yes. And we learn as we go along, as we all do within our lives, um, we try to do better. And so uh, I pray that we never have another pandemic, but I think if, if we do, um, we're going to be better prepared. We now know COVID is, is very similar to the flu. We don't talk about it a whole lot anymore, but you don't necessarily talk about when you had the flu. You stay home, you try not to infect other people, and you uh, treat the symptoms. And you'll get through it unless you have compromised immune systems. And, of course, you need to go see your uh your provider or hospital if you're having a tough time breathing, but you do that with influenza as well. So um, you do get through COVID now. I've had it a few times, and uh, as we all have, and um, made its way through here. Made it way, your way through here, and uh, the protocols are different now than what they were during the height of the pandemic. But again, we were pulling every tool we had out of the toolbox to try to get us through and have the least impact as possible. And as your public health department, I think we did a really good job. Bill, thank you. Appreciate your time this morning. You get to stay around as a co-host now. All right. <laughs> you no longer will be grilled. We'll now be grilling Senator Shelley Moore Capito, who joins us on the telephone next. And she'll be at the Stubblefield Institute along with Senator Manchin uh, coming up in just a couple of days here. We'll get more on that in a moment.